How does Congreve use satire in the way of the world to critique social norms and behaviors of his time? William Congreve's The Way of the World is a sharp critique of the social norms and behaviors of early 18th century England. Through its characters, plot, and dialogue, the play satirizes the hypocrisy, vanity, and moral laxity prevalent among the upper classes. 1.1. Social Satire The play targets the superficiality of the aristocracy and the pretentiousness of the social elite. Characters like Lady Wishfort and Sir Wilful Witwoud are portrayed as foolish and self-absorbed, embodying the absurdity of their class. Lady Wishfort's obsession with securing a wealthy match for her daughter and her gullibility in believing that Mirabel truly desires her reflect the period's fixation on social status and material wealth. 1.2. Critique of Marriage Congreve also critiques the institution of marriage, which is depicted as a mere economic transaction rather than a union based on love and mutual respect. The manipulation and scheming surrounding marriage proposals in the play highlight the commodification of marriage, where social and financial considerations often overshadow genuine emotional connections. 1.3. Satirical Characters The characters in the way of the world are exaggerated to emphasize their flaws. For instance, the character of Mirabel is portrayed as a schemer who uses his wit and charm to manipulate others, while characters like Fainal and Mrs. Fainal reveal the corruption and deceit beneath their polished exteriors. The play's characters often engage in verbal sparring, using wit and sarcasm to expose the weaknesses and contradictions of their peers. 1.4. Use of Language Congreve's use of language further enhances the satire. His dialogue is laced with irony, double entendres, and sharp repartee, which not only entertain but also underscore the play's critique of societal norms. The characters' conversations reveal the superficiality and dishonesty that underpin their interactions. Overall, Congreve's satire in the way of the world provides a biting commentary on the moral and social deficiencies of his time, using humor and wit to expose the hypocrisy and absurdity of contemporary society. 2. What are the main themes explored in The Way of the World, and how do they contribute to the play's overall message? The Way of the World delves into several themes that reflect both the social dynamics of the 18th century and universal aspects of human nature. 2.1. The Complexity of Love and Marriage One of the central themes is the complexity of love and marriage. The play explores different dimensions of romantic relationships, including genuine affection, strategic manipulation, and societal expectations. Mirabel and Millamant's relationship is characterized by mutual respect and wit, contrasting with the transactional and manipulative marriages of other characters. Through these relationships, Congreve comments on the nature of love and the influence of social conventions on personal relationships. 2.2. Social Satire and Class Critique As mentioned earlier, the play serves as a satire of the social elite and their moral shortcomings. The depiction of characters obsessed with status and wealth underscores the plays critique of a society driven by superficial values. The theme of social pretension is evident in the characters' interactions and the play's comedic portrayal of their follies. 2.3. Deception and Hypocrisy The play examines deception and hypocrisy as pervasive elements of society. Characters often deceive one another to achieve their goals, whether in romantic pursuits or social climbing. The play's intricate plot, full of schemes and counter-schemes, highlights the extent to which individuals are willing to deceive to secure their desires. The theme of hypocrisy is particularly evident in the contrast between characters' public personas and their private actions. 2.4. The Role of Wit and Intelligence Wit and intelligence play crucial roles in the play, both as tools for social navigation and as sources of humor. Characters like Mirabel and Millamant use their wit to outmaneuver their opponents and achieve their objectives. The play celebrates intellectual sharpness as a means of overcoming societal obstacles and reveals the importance of cleverness in a world where superficial appearances often dominate. 2.5. Gender Roles and Expectations The play also addresses gender roles and expectations. Millamant's assertiveness and independence challenge traditional notions of female passivity and dependence. Her negotiation with Mirabel regarding their marriage reflects her desire for equality and agency within the relationship. The play thus engages with issues of gender and power, questioning and subverting traditional gender roles. In sum, the themes explored in The Way of the World contribute to a multifaceted portrayal of early 18th century society, offering insights into the nature of love, the complexities of social interactions, and the dynamics of power and deception. Through its exploration of these themes, the play delivers a nuanced and critical perspective on the human condition and societal norms. Themes
1.1. The Nature of Marriage. The play explores marriage as a social contract rather than a romantic union. Congreve presents marriage in various lights, from the genuine, albeit strategically motivated, union of Mirabelle and Milliman to the opportunistic arrangements of characters like Lady Wishfort and Sir Wilful Withwoud. This exploration reflects the societal norms of the time, where marriage often served as a means to secure wealth and status rather than love. 1.2. Wit and Intelligence. Wit is a central theme in the play. Characters such as Mirabelle and Milliman use their intelligence and verbal dexterity to navigate the social labyrinth and achieve their aims. Congreve uses witty dialogue and clever repartee to highlight the character's social maneuvering and critique societal norms. The play celebrates intelligence as a valuable asset, contrasting it with the superficiality and ignorance of other characters. 1.3. Deception and Disguise Deception is a recurring motif in the play, with characters frequently employing disguise and subterfuge to further their goals. This theme is most evident in Mirabelle's elaborate schemes to win Milliman's hand and outwit his rivals. The use of deception serves as a commentary on the extent to which individuals will go to achieve their desires, often at the expense of honesty and integrity. 1.4. Social Satire Congreve's satire of social manners and aristocratic pretensions is a dominant theme. The play critiques the vanity, hypocrisy, and moral laxity of the upper classes. Through exaggerated characters and humorous situations, Congreve exposes the absurdities of social conventions and the superficial values of the elite. 1.5. Gender Dynamics The play addresses gender roles and the expectations placed on men and women. Milliman's assertiveness and negotiation with Mirabelle challenge traditional gender norms, presenting a more progressive view of female agency and equality. The interactions between male and female characters reveal the power dynamics and societal constraints of the period. 2. Plot. 2.1. Central Conflict. The central conflict revolves around Mirabelle's efforts to marry Millamant, whom he genuinely loves, while overcoming obstacles posed by Millamant's aunt, Lady Wishford. Lady Wishford is determined to marry Millamant to a wealthy suitor, and Mirabelle's schemes involve deceiving her and outmaneuvering other contenders. 2.2. Subplots. The play features several subplots that complement the main narrative. These include the deceitful schemes of Fainal and Mrs. Fainal, who plot to undermine Mirabelle's plans for their own gain. The subplot involving Sir Wilful Witwoud and his attempts to woo Milliman further complicates the narrative, adding layers of intrigue and humor. 2.3. Resolution. The play concludes with a resolution of the various conflicts and schemes. Mirabelle's plans are ultimately successful, he secures Milliman's hand in marriage, and the various deceptions are revealed. The resolution underscores the themes of wit and intelligence, as Mirabelle's cleverness prevails over the superficiality and deceit of his rivals. 3. Narrative Style 3.1. Use of Dialogue Congreve's narrative style relies heavily on sharp, witty dialogue. The characters engage in rapid exchanges of repartee, showcasing their intelligence and social acumen. The dialogue serves not only to advance the plot but also to reveal character traits and societal critique. 3.2. Dramatic Irony The play employs dramatic irony, where the audience is aware of the character's true intentions and deceptions, while the characters themselves are often in the dark. This technique adds layers of complexity to the narrative and enhances the comedic effect. 3.3. Satirical Tone The narrative style is characterized by a satirical tone that critiques societal norms and behaviors. Congreve uses humor and irony to highlight the absurdities of the characters' actions and the social conventions they adhere to. 3.4. Structural Complexity The play's structure is complex, with multiple plotlines interwoven to create a rich tapestry of intrigue and deception. The interplay of different plots and subplots adds depth to the narrative and reinforces the themes of social manipulation and wit. 4. Genre 4.1. Restoration Comedy the Way of the World is a prime example of restoration comedy, a genre known for its satirical take on social manners and its emphasis on wit and verbal dexterity. Restoration comedies often feature elaborate plots, sophisticated dialogue, and a focus on the follies and pretensions of the upper classes. 4.2. Comedy of Manners The play is also classified as a comedy of manners, a subgenre that focuses on the behavior and social norms of the aristocracy. It highlights the characters' adherence to and deviation from societal expectations, using humor to critique their actions and values. 4.3. Farce and Satire While primarily a comedy of manners, the play incorporates elements of farce and satire. 
The exaggerated characters and improbable situations contribute to the farcical elements, while the satirical content addresses the absurdities of social conventions and behaviors. In summary, The Way of the World employs a complex narrative style and genre conventions to explore themes related to marriage, social satire, and gender dynamics. Its intricate plot and witty dialogue reflect Congreve's critique of 18th-century English society, making it a significant work in the restoration comedy tradition. Here are some questions related to theoretical concepts in the way of the world, along with detailed answers. 1. How does William Congreve's The Way of the World engage with the concept of social contract, as articulated by philosophers like Hobbes and Rousseau? 1.1. Social Contract Theory Overview the concept of the social contract, as developed by philosophers like Thomas Hobbes and Jean-Jacques Rousseau, refers to the idea that individuals consent to surrender some of their freedoms and submit to the authority of a governing body in exchange for protection and societal order. Hobbes, in Leviathan, argued that in the state of nature, life is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short, and thus individuals agree to a social contract to escape this anarchy. Rousseau, in The Social Contract, emphasized that a legitimate political authority must be based on the collective will of the people, aiming for the common good. 1.2. Social Contract in the Way of the World In the Way of the World, Congreve explores the dynamics of social contracts in the context of relationships and social interactions, particularly focusing on marriage and social status. The play reflects on the ways individuals negotiate and renegotiate their social contracts, often driven by self-interest and social ambitions. 1.3. Marriage is a social contract. Marriage in the play can be viewed as a social contract where personal desires and societal expectations intersect. Characters like Lady Wishfort view marriage as a transaction involving economic and social benefits rather than a mutual emotional commitment. This transactional nature reflects a Habesian view where societal order and personal gain often override genuine affection. 1.4. Social negotiation and manipulation. Mirabelle's strategic manipulation to win Milliman's hand and the various schemes of other characters illustrate the negotiation and renegotiation of social contracts. Mirabelle's elaborate plans and deceptions can be seen as efforts to navigate the social contract of marriage and social status, much like individuals in Hobbes's state of nature seek to establish order and security. 1.5. The Role of Wit and Deception The play's use of wit and deception highlights how individuals maneuver within their social contracts. Characters employ cleverness and strategic deception to achieve their goals, reflecting a more pragmatic and Rousseauan perspective where individuals act based on their perceived collective will or personal interest, rather than idealized notions of common good. 1.6. Conclusion. Congreve's The Way of the World engages with the social contract theory by depicting the complexities of social and personal agreements, particularly through marriage and social maneuvering. The play illustrates the tensions between individual desires, social expectations, and the pragmatic strategies used to navigate these dynamics. 2. How does the way of the world illustrate the principles of mimetic theory, as proposed by René Girard? 2.1. Mimetic Theory Overview René Girard's mimetic theory posits that human desires are imitative rather than intrinsic. According to Girard, individuals often desire things because others desire them, leading to rivalry and conflict. This mimetic desire can result in violent competition or scapegoating as a means to resolve conflicts and restore social order. 2.2. Mimetic Desire in the Play In the way of the world, mimetic desire is evident in the characters' interactions and ambitions. For example, the competition for Millamant's hand among suitors, including Mirabelle and Sir Wilful Whitwoud, illustrates mimetic rivalry. The suitors' desires are influenced by their awareness of each other's intentions, leading to strategic maneuvering and deception. 2.3. Rivalry and Conflict The play's central plot involves Mirabelle's schemes to outwit other characters and secure Milliman's hand. This rivalry is driven by mimetic desire, as the suitors are motivated not only by their personal affection for Milliman but also by their desire to surpass their rivals. The competitive nature of the courtship reflects Gerard's idea of mimetic conflict, where desires are shaped by the presence of competitors. 2.4. Scapegoating and Resolution while the play does not feature explicit scapegoating, the resolution involves the exposure and defeat of deceitful characters, such as Fainal and Mrs. Fainal. The eventual success of Mirabelle and Millamant's union can be seen as a restoration of social order, where the disruptive forces of mimetic rivalry are resolved. The play's resolution reflects Gerard's idea that mimetic conflict often leads to a re-establishment of social harmony through the resolution of rivalries. 
2.5. Conclusion. The Way of the World illustrates mimetic theory through its depiction of rivalry, competition, and the influence of others' desires on individual actions. The play's exploration of social and romantic conflicts reveals the dynamics of mimetic desire and its role in shaping interpersonal relationships and social outcomes. 3. How does the play reflect the principles of dramatic irony and comic resolution in its narrative structure? 3.1. Dramatic Irony Overview Dramatic irony occurs when the audience knows more about a situation than the characters do, creating a discrepancy between the audience's understanding and the characters' perceptions. This technique is often used to enhance the tension or humor of a narrative. 3.2. Dramatic irony in the way of the world. In the way of the world, dramatic irony is used to heighten the comedic effect and complexity of the plot. For instance, the audience is aware of Mirabelle's true intentions and schemes to win Millamant, while Lady Wishford and other characters are deceived by his pretense. This creates humor and anticipation as the audience watches the characters navigate the web of deception. 3.3. Comic Resolution. The play adheres to the conventions of comedy by resolving conflicts in a manner that restores social order and harmony. The comic resolution involves the triumph of the protagonists, Mirabelle and Millamant, over the antagonists, such as Fainal and Mrs. Fainal. The exposure of deceit and the successful union of the central couple align with the comedic genre's focus on positive outcomes and the restoration of social equilibrium. 3.4. Narrative Structure and Irony. The play's narrative structure is built around intricate plots and schemes, with multiple layers of deception and misunderstanding. The use of dramatic irony enhances the comedic elements of the narrative, as the audience's knowledge of the character's true intentions creates a sense of anticipation and amusement. 3.5. Conclusion The way of the world effectively employs dramatic irony and comic resolution to create a layered and entertaining narrative. The use of dramatic irony adds depth and humor to the plot, while the comic resolution aligns with the conventions of restoration comedy, providing a satisfying conclusion that restores social order and harmony. 4. In what ways does the way of the world utilize gender theory to comment on the roles and expectations of women in the early 18th century? 4.1. Gender Theory Overview Gender theory examines how gender roles and expectations shape individuals' experiences and social interactions. It explores the ways in which societal norms influence perceptions of masculinity and femininity and how individuals navigate and challenge these norms. 4.2. Gender Roles in the Play In the way of the world, gender roles and expectations are critically examined through the characters' interactions and societal dynamics. Women in the play are often depicted as objects of manipulation or marriage prospects, reflecting the limited agency and societal expectations placed upon them. 4.3. Millamant is a progressive figure. Millamant challenges traditional gender roles through her assertiveness and negotiation with Mirabelle. Her willingness to discuss and negotiate terms for their marriage reflects a more progressive view of female agency. Millamant's character subverts conventional expectations by actively engaging in discussions about her own marital terms and independence. 4.4. Lady Wishfort's role. Lady Wishfort's obsession with securing a wealthy match for her daughter and her gullibility illustrate the societal pressure on women to secure advantageous marriages. Her character reflects the limited roles available to women, who were often valued primarily for their marriage prospects rather than their personal qualities. 4.5. Gender Dynamics in Relationships The play's depiction of romantic and social relationships reveals the power dynamics and gender expectations of the time. The manipulation and strategic maneuvering by both male and female characters highlight the ways in which gender roles shape their actions and interactions. 4.6. Conclusion. The way of the world utilizes gender theory to comment on the roles and expectations of women in the early 18th century. Through characters like Millamant and Lady Wishfort, the play examines gender dynamics and societal constraints, offering a nuanced critique of gender roles and expectations. These questions and answers explore various theoretical concepts related to the way of the world, providing a deeper understanding of how Congreve's play engages with philosophical, literary, and social theories. How does Congreve use satire as a literary technique in the way of the world to critique 18th century English society? 1.1. Definition of Satire Satire is a literary technique that uses humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to criticize or mock individuals, institutions, or societal norms. Its primary aim is to highlight flaws and provoke thought or reform. 1.2. Satirical elements in the way of the world. 
Congreve employs satire extensively to critique the social and moral conventions of his time. Key elements of satire in the play include 1.2.1. Character exaggeration. Characters like Lady Wishfort, Fainall, and Sir Wilful Witwoud are exaggerated to highlight their flaws in societal roles. Lady Wishfort's obsession with marriage and her susceptibility to deception mock the superficial values of the aristocracy. Fainall's duplicity and Sir Wilful's naive gullibility expose the moral corruption and pretentiousness of the social elite. 1.2.2. Social Commentary. The play critiques the social norms surrounding marriage, wealth, and status. The transactional nature of marriage in the play, where characters seek advantageous unions rather than genuine affection, satirizes the commodification of relationships. Congreve's portrayal of social climbing and deceit underscores the moral emptiness of the upper classes. 1.2.3. Wit and Irony. The witty dialogue and ironic situations serve as tools for satire. Characters often use sharp wit to reveal the absurdities of societal expectations and to expose the discrepancies between appearances and reality. The play's irony highlights the gap between the characters' public personas and their true intentions. 1.3. Impact of Satire. By using satire, Congreve invites the audience to critically reflect on the societal norms and behaviors of the time. The play's humorous and ironic portrayal of characters and social practices serves to entertain while simultaneously challenging the audience's perceptions of social and moral values. 1.4. Conclusion. Congreve's use of satire in the way of the world is a powerful literary technique that critiques 18th-century English society. Through exaggerated characters, social commentary, and witty dialogue, the play exposes the flaws and hypocrisies of the upper classes, offering both entertainment and insight. 2. How does Congreve employ dramatic irony in the way of the world to enhance the play's comedic effect? 2.1. Definition of dramatic irony. Dramatic irony occurs when the audience knows more about a situation than the characters do. This discrepancy between the audience's knowledge and the character's understanding can create tension, humor, or both. 2.2. Dramatic irony in the play. 2.2.1. Mirabelle's schemes. The audience is aware of Mirabelle's elaborate plans to win Millamant's hand and outwit his rivals, while other characters, particularly Lady Wishfort, remain oblivious to his true intentions. This creates humor as the audience anticipates the reveal of Mirabelle's deceptions and enjoys the character's misunderstandings. 2.2.2. Disguises and Deceptions. The play features several instances of disguise and deception. For example, Mirabelle's use of disguises and false pretenses to achieve his goals is known to the audience but not to the other characters. This use of dramatic irony adds to the comedic tension as the audience observes the characters' reactions to the deceptive situations. 2.2.3. Misunderstandings. The play's numerous misunderstandings and mistaken identities contribute to the dramatic irony. Characters' misinterpretations of each other's actions and intentions create comedic situations that are heightened by the audience's superior knowledge of the actual circumstances. 2.3. Effect on comedy. Dramatic irony enhances the comedic effect by allowing the audience to witness the gap between what characters believe to be true and what is actually happening. This creates a sense of anticipation and amusement as the audience watches the characters navigate the complexities of the plot while being unaware of the full picture. 2.4. Conclusion. Congreve's use of dramatic irony in the way of the world significantly contributes to the play's comedic effect. By creating situations where the audience is privy to information that the characters lack, Congreve enhances the humor and engagement of the narrative, making the play a more dynamic and entertaining experience. 3. How does the way of the world utilize, characterization, to explore themes of social status and deception? 3.1. Definition of characterization. Characterization refers to the techniques used by an author to develop and portray characters in a narrative. It involves revealing characters' traits, motivations, and relationships through direct and indirect means. 3.2. Characterization of key figures. 3.2.1. Mirabelle. Mirabelle is characterized as a witty and strategic figure who uses his intelligence and charm to navigate social and romantic challenges. His elaborate schemes to win Millamant's hand and outwit his rivals reflect his understanding of social dynamics and his willingness to employ deception to achieve his goals. Mirabelle's characterization highlights the theme of social status as he manipulates societal expectations to secure a favorable outcome. 3.2.2. Millamant. 
Millamant is portrayed as a clever and independent woman who asserts her agency in the context of marriage. Her negotiation with Mirabelle and her demands for a liberty clause in their marriage contract illustrate her desire for autonomy and control. Millamant's characterization challenges traditional gender roles and reflects the theme of social status by negotiating her position within the constraints of societal expectations. 3.2.3. Lady Wishford. Lady Wishford is characterized as a wealthy but foolish and gullible woman obsessed with securing a marriage for her daughter. Her susceptibility to deception and her preoccupation with social status and wealth highlight the theme of social status. Her character serves as a vehicle for satirizing the superficial values and ambitions of the upper classes. 3.2.4. Fainal and Mrs. Fainal. The characterization of Fainal and Mrs. Fainal as deceitful and manipulative individuals underscores the theme of deception. Their actions and schemes reflect the lengths to which characters will go to maintain or improve their social standing, revealing the moral corruption and opportunism prevalent in their social circle. 3.3. Impact of Characterization. The characterization in the way of the world provides insight into the themes of social status and deception. Through the development of characters like Mirabelle, Millamant, Lady, Wishfort, and others, Congreve explores how individuals navigate and manipulate social structures to achieve their personal and social objectives. 3.4. Conclusion. Congreve's use of characterization in the way of the world effectively explores themes of social status and deception. By developing complex and multifaceted characters, Congreve reveals the intricacies of social dynamics and the role of deception in achieving and maintaining social standing. 4. How does Congreve use dialogue as a literary technique to develop character relationships and advance the plot in the way of the world? 4.1. Definition of dialogue. Dialogue is the written conversation between characters in a literary work. It serves to reveal characters' personalities, relationships, and motivations, and to advance the plot through interactions and exchanges. 4.2. Dialogue and Character Development. 4.2.1. Wit and Verbal Sparring. The witty and often sharp dialogue between characters like Mirabelle and Millamant reveals their intellectual compatibility and mutual respect. Their exchanges reflect their shared values and attitudes, and their playful banter serves to highlight their relationship dynamics and romantic tension. 4.2.2. Revealing Motivations. The dialogue between characters such as Lady Wishfort and her suitors reveals their motivations and desires. For example, Lady Wishfort's conversations with her suitors expose her preoccupation with social status and her gullibility, while Fainal's dialogue reveals his duplicity and ulterior motives. 4.2.3. Social Commentary. The dialogue in the play often serves as a vehicle for social commentary. Characters use witty and ironic language to critique societal norms and behaviors, providing insight into Congreve's satirical perspective on the social and moral conventions of the time. 4.3. Dialogue and Plot Advancement. 4.3.1. Unveiling Schemes. Dialogue is used to unveil and advance the various schemes and deceptions in the play. Mirabelle's conversations with his allies and rivals reveal his plans and strategies, driving the plot forward and creating suspense as the audience anticipates the outcomes of his schemes. 4.3.2. Creating Conflict. The dialogue between characters often creates and escalates conflicts. Misunderstandings, rivalries, and confrontations are portrayed through dynamic exchanges, contributing to the dramatic tension and comedic elements of the plot. 4.3.3. Resolution. The resolution of the play is also conveyed through dialogue. The exposure of deceit and the final reconciliation between characters are achieved through verbal revelations and negotiations, bringing closure to the plot and reinforcing the themes of wit and social manipulation. 4.4. Conclusion. Congreve's use of dialogue in the way of the world is a crucial literary technique that develops character relationships, advances the plot, and provides social commentary. Through sharp wit, revealing exchanges, and dynamic interactions, dialogue enhances the play's complexity and engages the audience in its comedic and thematic elements. These questions and answers delve into the critical and literary techniques used in the way of the world, offering a deeper understanding of Congreve's methods and the play's impact. How does the character of Mirabelle reflect the ideals of restoration comedy, and what are his primary motivations and strategies in the play? 1.1. Restoration Comedy Ideals. Restoration comedy is characterized by its focus on wit, social satire, and the exploration of complex, often morally ambiguous characters. 
The genre often features plots centered around romantic entanglements, social ambitions, and clever deceptions. 1.2. Mirabelle's Reflection of Restoration Ideals Mirabelle embodies many of the ideals of restoration comedy through his wit, charm, and strategic manipulation. He is a quintessential restoration hero, known for his clever schemes and sophisticated dialogue. His character is designed to entertain and engage the audience through his intelligence and resourcefulness. 1.3. Motivations and Strategies 1.3.1. Romantic Ambitions Mirabelle's primary motivation is to win the hand of Mamant, whom he loves deeply. His romantic ambitions drive much of the play's plot. To achieve this goal, Mirabelle employs a series of elaborate schemes and deceptions to outwit his rivals and secure Milliman's favor. 1.3.2. Social Manipulation Mirabelle's strategies involve manipulating social dynamics to his advantage. He cleverly navigates the social hierarchy and utilizes his understanding of characters' weaknesses to achieve his objectives. His schemes include disguises, alliances, and calculated revelations to expose the deceitful intentions of his rivals. 1.3.3. Wit and Charm Mirabelle's wit and charm are central to his character. He uses his verbal dexterity to engage with other characters, demonstrate his superiority, and persuade those around him. His sharp dialogue and playful banter contribute to the play's comedic elements and showcase his intellectual prowess. 1.4. Conclusion Mirabelle reflects the ideals of restoration comedy through his wit, strategic manipulation, and complex character traits. His motivations and strategies reveal his resourcefulness and charm, making him a central figure in the play's exploration of social and romantic themes. 2. In what ways does Milliman challenge traditional gender roles and expectations in the way of the world? 2.1. Traditional Gender Roles In the early 18th century, traditional gender roles prescribed that women were primarily concerned with marriage and social status, often limiting their autonomy and agency. Women were expected to conform to societal expectations and maintain a subordinate position in relationships and social interactions. 2.2. Milliman's Challenges to Gender Roles 2.2.1. Assertiveness and Agency. Milliman challenges traditional gender roles through her assertiveness and agency. She actively engages in negotiations regarding her marriage with Mirabelle, setting conditions and asserting her own desires. Her willingness to discuss and demand terms such as the liberty clause in their marriage contract demonstrates her desire for control and independence. 2.2.2. Intellectual Independence. Milliman is portrayed as an intellectually independent character who values wit and cleverness. Her dialogue with Mirabelle reflects her sharp mind and capacity for independent thought. She engages in witty repartee and intellectual discourse, challenging the notion that women should be passive or uninformed. 2.2.3. Control over her own fate. Milliman's negotiation of her marriage terms and her insistence on maintaining her personal freedom reflect a challenge to the conventional expectations of women's roles. By asserting her own conditions and seeking a marriage based on mutual respect and understanding, she redefines the terms of her personal relationships. 2.3. Impact on the play. Milliman's character serves to critique and question the societal norms of her time. Her behavior and demands highlight the limitations placed on women and offer an alternative view of female autonomy and agency. Her interactions with Mirabelle and other characters reveal a more progressive perspective on gender roles. 2.4. Conclusion. Milliman challenges traditional gender roles in the way of the world through her assertiveness, intellectual independence, and control over her own fate. Her character offers a critique of societal expectations and serves as a progressive example of female agency and empowerment. 3. How does Lady Wishfort's character function as a vehicle for social satire in the play? 3.1. Lady Wishfort's role. Lady Wishfort is a central figure in the play, serving as both a comedic and satirical character. Her obsession with securing a wealthy match for her daughter and her gullibility make her a target for satire. 3.2. Satirical Aspects of Lady Wishfort's Character 3.2.1. Obsession with Marriage and Social Status Lady Wishfort's preoccupation with marriage and social status reflects the superficial values and ambitions of the upper class. Her intense focus on finding a suitable match for her daughter and her own desire for attention and admiration highlight the materialistic and status-driven aspects of her character. 3.2.2. Gullibility and Deception. Lady Wishfort's gullibility is a key element of her character. She is easily deceived by Mirabelle's false courtship and the schemes of other characters. 
Her susceptibility to deception exposes her lack of discernment and reinforces the satirical critique of social pretensions and the superficiality of the upper class. 3.2.3. Comedic Exaggeration. Lady Wishfort's character is exaggerated to enhance the comedic effect. Her exaggerated reactions, vanity, and inability to see through deception create humorous situations and serve as a means of mocking societal norms and behaviors. Her role as a comic figure underscores the play's satirical tone. 3.3. Impact on the play. Lady Wishfort's character functions as a vehicle for social satire by embodying and exaggerating the flaws and pretensions of the upper class. Her actions and attitudes provide a critical commentary on societal values and contribute to the play's exploration of social dynamics and deception. 3.4. Conclusion. Lady Wishfort's character serves as a key component of the social satire in the way of the world. Through her obsession with social status, gullibility, and comedic exaggeration, she reflects and critiques the superficial values and behaviors of the upper class, enhancing the play's satirical and humorous elements. 4. How does the character of Fainal illustrate the theme of deception and moral corruption in the way of the world? 4.1. Deception and moral corruption. Deception and moral corruption are central themes in the way of the world. Characters' use of deceit to achieve their goals and their lack of ethical integrity reflect the play's critique of social and moral values. 4.2. Characterization of Fainal. 4.2.1. Deceptive Nature. Fainal is characterized by his cunning and deceitfulness. He engages in manipulative schemes to secure financial gain and personal advantage, including plotting against Mirabelle and seeking to undermine his rivals. His deceptions are driven by self-interest and a lack of moral integrity. 4.2.2. Moral Corruption. Fainal's actions reveal his moral corruption and ethical shortcomings. His willingness to deceive and exploit others for personal gain illustrates his lack of principles and his prioritization of self-interest over honesty and integrity. His character represents the moral decay and opportunism present in the play's social environment. 4.2.3. Relationship with other characters. Fainal's relationships with other characters, such as his wife Mrs. Fainal and Lady Wishford, further illustrate his deceitful nature. His manipulation of Mrs. Fainal and his exploitation of Lady Wishford's gullibility highlight his ability to exploit social and personal relationships for his benefit. 4.3. Impact on the play. Fainal's character serves to underscore the theme of deception and moral corruption in the play. His actions and motivations contribute to the play's exploration of the complexities of social interactions and the consequences of ethical compromise. 4.4. Conclusion. The character of Fainal illustrates the theme of deception and moral corruption in the way of the world through his cunning, manipulative behavior, and lack of moral integrity. His actions and relationships highlight the play's critique of societal values and the consequences of deceit. 5. What role does Sir Wilful Witwoud play in the play, and how does his character contribute to the comedic elements and social satire? 5.1. Sir Wilful Witwoud's Role Sir Wilful Witwoud is portrayed as a foolish and naive character, providing a source of humor and satire in the play. His character contrasts with the more sophisticated and scheming figures such as Mirabelle and Fainal. 5.2. Comedic Elements 5.2.1. Naivety and Foolishness Sir Wilful's naivety and lack of social awareness contribute to the play's comedic elements. His simplistic and uninformed perspective contrasts with the more scheming and manipulative characters, creating humorous situations and highlighting the absurdities of social norms. 5.2.2. Interactions with other characters. Sir Wilful's interactions with characters like Lady Wishfort and Milliman provide opportunities for comedic exchanges. His attempts to navigate social situations and his inability to understand the complexities of the plot contribute to the humor of the play. 5.2.3. Exaggeration and Satire. Sir Wilful's character is exaggerated to serve as a satirical commentary on social and intellectual pretensions. His lack of sophistication and his role as a foil to more clever characters highlight the play's critique of social status and pretentiousness. 5.3. Impact on the Play. Sir Wilful Witwoud's character adds to the play's comedic and satirical elements by providing a humorous contrast to the more calculating characters. His foolishness and interactions with others enhance the play's exploration of social dynamics and contribute to its overall satire. 5.4. Conclusion. Sir Wilful Witwoud plays a significant role in the comedic elements and social satire of the way of the world. His naivety, interactions with other characters, and exaggerated portrayal contribute to the play's humor and critique of societal norms.
These questions and answers provide a deeper understanding of the characters in the way of the world and their roles in the play's themes and comedic elements.